Have you ever wondered why you feel the way you do? Being able to recognize and understand your emotions and better develop awareness will help you gain multiple successes in your life. Surprisingly, most of us are not self-aware enough and as a result, our performance and our communication suffers, causing all areas of our life to deteriorate. In this video, I'm gonna break down the main components of self-awareness and I'm gonna offer some ideas on how to improve each one. By the end of this video, you should have a better understanding of what it takes to not only increase your self-awareness, but to take it to a level that you never imagined. So what is self-awareness? Let's break it down. Self-awareness is your ability to see yourself clearly and objectively through unclouded reflection of your own mental and emotional processes. Now, that can seem like a mouthful, so let me break it down even further. Increasing your self-awareness is effectively working on your emotional intelligence, which will help you with your ability to understand, use, and manage your emotions in a positive way. By prioritizing and working on your self-awareness, this will help you release stress, communicate more effectively, empathize with others, and even overcome challenges that seem daunting and impossible. The first component of self-awareness is self-image. Your self-image is your perception or personal view of you. These views of yourself are developed from personal experience in the past, what you believe your abilities are in the present, and what you see for yourself in the future. Having a positive self-image is a powerful strength because it helps you recognize what's possible for you, which feeds your confidence. It helps balance your mental and emotional state and gives the ability to take a step back and analyze what areas of your life you need to improve. People that have a positive self-image may see themselves as attractive and desirable. Maybe they believe that they are intelligent or destined for greatness, and typically they're inclined to be happy about themselves. Unfortunately, most of us lean towards the opposite and are challenged with negative self-image. We too often focus on our faults and our weaknesses, which breaks down our self-confidence and affects how we feel about ourselves and how we interact with other people and the rest of the world. Working on creating a positive self-image can be life-changing. In another YouTube video titled, How to Build Confidence and Self-Esteem, I talk more in depth about this concept. I'll attach it in the link for you to watch. But some things to start working on immediately are, avoid negative self-talk. Stop comparing yourself to other people. Accepting your flaws and acknowledge yourself that nobody's perfect. Nobody! It's important to start setting manageable goals. And of course, one of my favorites, manage your self-care and start to exercise more. The second component to self-awareness is your thoughts. Your thoughts have incredible power to shape your life because your thoughts directly influence your beliefs, which in turn guide your actions. Your thoughts are catalysts for self-perpetuating cycles. Henry Ford was famous for saying, whether you think you can or cannot, you're right. In other words, you get what you think you'll get. The average human has 60,000 thoughts per day. 90% of those are repetitive. The challenge is that these thoughts are what create our emotions. So if you notice your thoughts are negatively inclined, it's probably time to take note throughout the day as to what exactly you're saying about yourself and start to become more aware of how you were talking about yourself and how you were thinking about in different situations. Again, a way to work on this is start writing down some of those repetitive negative thoughts that are reoccurring throughout the day. Once they're on paper, you can start to identify what are the triggers that are causing these negative thoughts and then work on becoming less triggered. After reflecting, try and implement some more positive thoughts into your processes. This may sound like an impossible task, but you just need to chip away at it. Little by little, it's not gonna happen overnight. The next component is your feelings. When other people say things about you, whether good or bad, what are those feelings that are created? Are those feelings associated with past experiences? Are they linked to how you feel when you say things about yourself? If you see some patterns in this area, it's important to identify them so you can start to break them down. Once you can identify those feelings, take responsibility for them and don't ignore the negatives. By paying attention to how you behave, you can start the process of overcoming and changing. One of the things I have to remind myself on a weekly basis is to breathe. When I'm feeling negative feelings, I especially love the box breathing technique. You can look it up and learn a little bit more about it. But by breathing through something, it helps me change my state and it helps me clear my head so that I can own it and question why I'm feeling that way and start to move past it. The next component to increasing your self-awareness is are or your 
physical body. One thing to be aware of is your physical response to thoughts created in your head. Quite often when we're experiencing negative thoughts, it can cause things like difficulty breathing, panic attacks, sleep problems, chronic fatigue, even chest pains and high blood pressure. A lot of times, these might be subtle shifts that nobody other than you can tell are happening. I've experienced this many times in my life. In fact, most times I'm not even aware of my physical response until I go back and evaluate the moment through self-reflection. After I was able to identify my physical responses to my negative thinking, I was able to use some techniques to help me push through it. Some of the things that help me when this happens are listening to music. I even created a playlist on my phone called Feel Good Pick Me Ups. Sometimes I go to the gym or I'll walk around the office building. I'll do a short meditation or even take a 15 minute nap. These are all things that I use to distract me in the moment and help me change my physical state. The next component to self-awareness are your emotions. Our emotions are one of the most powerful forces. They determine our outlook on life based on the events that are occurring around us. In one of my favorite books of all time, The 177 Mental Toughness Secrets of the World Class by Steve Siebold, he says that amateurs believe formal education is the most important key to success. Yet studies show a person's level of emotional intelligence is far more significant. The world class place a high value on their ability to influence others through their charm, charisma, and emotional maturity. While amateurs appeal to logic, the world class realizes that humans are more emotionally driven creatures who respond far better to emotionally charged words, gestures, and actions. Being able to identify what your current emotional state is will give you the ability to manage your emotions effectively. I'm not saying the goal should ever be to never have emotional swings. The goal should be to always be aware of what state you're in. If you fail to ever get a grasp on your current emotional state, it's gonna be difficult for you to move past your erratic emotions that are controlling your life. By being aware of your emotional state, you will be able to better communicate with people and come from a non-judgmental place, which makes you a more effective partner, father, husband, and overall human being. Again, things that can also help improve this are things like staying healthy, right? Self-care, positive relationships, meditation, mindfulness, even taking a step back to evaluate before responding in the moment. If you want a more in-depth dive, a longer and raw version of this video with more stories and examples, make sure you check out my podcast. You'll love it. The link is in the description box. Hopefully by now, you have a better understanding of what the components are we need to work on to increase our self-awareness and become a better version of ourselves. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you on the next video.